I'm Reverend Jane Gould from St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Lynn, and I am here as a pastor, as a daughter, as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, and as an advocate for justice. Our Episcopal Bishop Barbara Harris used to say, we get Micah all wrong. We decide that we love justice but would rather do kindness. So my prayer today, and my standing in the need of prayer, and my invitation to you in prayer, is that we might, in fact, be God's workers of justice. That we might indeed be doers of justice, and not simply live more comfortably doing kindness. God's Spirit be with you. Let's, let us be in prayer. Holy and life-giving God, you make us uncomfortable, and we give thanks. You disturb us when we are at rest, saying, go, my sisters, my daughters, my sons and brothers. Go out into the world. Transform our world. Make it a place where people know themselves to be created in my image, when they know themselves to be called to free the prisoners, to open the eyes of the blind, to love one another as I love you. I need you, says our God. I need you to be a light to the nations. I need you to do justice. Do not sit in comfort. Do not hide behind locked doors. Do not live in fear. No, stand up, step out, walk on. Be proud. Be my people. Amen. Amen. Deb Longabacher. I'm representing Congregation Havrat Shalom of Andover and Merrimack College's Center for the Study of Jewish Christian Muslim Relations. I have a poem by Marcia Falk from her Book of Blessings. Loving life and its mysterious source, with all my heart and all my spirit, all my senses and strength, I take upon myself and into myself these promises to care for the earth and those who live upon it, to pursue justice and peace, to love kindness and compassion. I will teach this to our children throughout the passage of the day as I dwell in my home and as I go on my journey, from the time I rise until I fall asleep. And may my actions be faithful to my words, that our children's children will, may live to know, truth and kindness have embraced, peace and justice have kissed and are one. We're going to march together. I hope you'll feel this marching spirit in you so we can be proud together.
marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching. We are marching. Ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching. We are marching. Ooh, we are marching in the light of God. My friends in Christ, I'm going to invite clergy to come and just join me up here. As clergy united, we send you out into this day of pride, trusting in the power of the Spirit, the Spirit of love, justice, peace, and light. May God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and from deep within you as we join hands and spirits, arms and bodies and walk for justice and peace and love. Amen. Amen. here with all the fabulousness. I know you want to shop for the goods. We're not talking about leashes and t-shirts. We're talking about all the hotties out here on the common. Give it up for North Shore Pride! The first ever North Shore Pride as I understand it. My name is Johnny Blazes. I will be guiding you through this afternoon of fabulousness, debauchery, well, maybe not. We're family friendly. PG 12, let's call it. And we have such an amazing lineup of singers, speakers, artists, rappers, poets. I can't wait to get this kicked off. So please come on closer, fill up this area, grab a seat, grab a dancing area. You can get as close as you want. I don't bite hard. And first to the stage, I would like to introduce the president of North Shore Pride, Hope Watt Bucci. Woo! Happy North Shore Pride! Woo! I want you all to look around and look at who you're standing next to because today you are making history. First ever North Shore Pride. North Shore Pride, if you see anybody with a North Shore Pride staff or volunteer, let's give it up for them because they are our board, our committee, our volunteers, and without them, we could not be here today. North Shore Pride is a new nonprofit organization whose mission is education of our community and advocacy for LGBT persons on the North Shore. We are concerned about the hate crimes that continue on the North Shore. We are concerned about the people who do not have a voice, our LGBT friends. And uh, I'll give you an example, a perfect example as to why we're here today. I had a young gentleman call me up and said, I live in North Salem. I'm a bisexual young man. I can't come out to my family. They've disowned me. Is there a place where I can go and feel comfortable? I want to come to your pride. So that's why we're here today. Now when we decided where are we gonna have this festival, where will we have this parade first ever? I went over um, to Mayor Kim Driscoll of Salem and said, Mayor Driscoll, this is what we wanna do. It's the first ever. We have no idea if there'll be 10 people here or 2,000 people. And she looked at me without hesitation and she said, let's do this. So please visit us on NorthShorePride.org. We're on Facebook as well. We have an existing mission. We'll be out there. We're going to do this every year. If you have a group that needs assistance or advocacy, please go on our website and let us know, and we will come and speak with you. Without further ado, please give it up for the amazing mayor of Salem, Kim Driscoll.
Well, I couldn't be prouder of our city and prouder of all the North Shore Pride volunteers. A big round of applause for what they did to make today so special. So Hope comes into my office and says, we want to do a North Shore Pride Parade. I say, great! She says, no, maybe you didn't hear me. We, we want to do a North Shore Pride Parade. I say, great! She says, well, you know, this could be... What? Great! And uh, it works. So thank you for everyone who's come out. All the support along the route. This is more than just a parade um, or just a festival here today. This is really an opportunity for us to recognize we are a tolerant community. We want people to be people. This is Salem's chance to sparkle no matter what color, what shade, what background. Whatever your personality is, this is home for you. And uh, we want to recognize that, not just in Salem, but across the entire North Shore. So this is an easy call. It's something we're happy to do. And I hope it's the beginning of a wonderful tradition and that the streets will be lined with even more folks and a great opportunity for us to say we love each other. Regardless of any differences in our backgrounds, we are one community. I want to recognize some of the other elected officials who are here with me today. Our city councilor from Ward 7, Joseph O'Keefe. Our city councilor from Ward 5, Josh Turiel. City councilor from North Salem and Ward 6, Paul Preeby. I'm especially proud to recognize our congressman for the 6th District, always standing up for the rights of not, not just uh, cities and towns and officials who live here, but people from any background. Congressman John Tierney, if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you all. Look, you know, we're fighting down in Washington for equality every day, and it's a big fight. You know that. But it is a pleasure to come from Salem, have lived here my life, and know that we have a mayor and a city council and the other leaders in this community willing to stand up for equality, willing to stand up for tolerance, and willing to take the forefront on that. Let's give them all a hand. This is great. And besides all of our families coming out and being really supportive, the Chamber of Commerce and businesses were first to be out there hang those flags and let people know in Salem and in the greater Salem area, we're all together in this and we're for equality. Thank you all very, very much. I want to thank all the sponsors who also helped make this possible, and I know the North Shore Pride Committee worked really hard uh, to ensure that they had the support they needed, and there's a number of them here. Eastern Bank will be up later. They helped with this event. They helped with many events throughout our community, so a big round of applause for them stepping up to the table. And last but not least, I'll ask Hope to come back out one more time. The city of Salem, like every community in the Commonwealth, has a city seal. I think Salem's is actually incredibly beautiful. It harkens back to the days of Salem's great age of sail, when ships left our harbors and sailed incredible journeys to the Far East and brought back curries and teas and peppers and brought great wealth to Salem. And I think it's pretty symbolic that uh, Salem has changed throughout the years, that we're turning back to our waterfront, trying to reclaim our history. And as we're doing that, we're also recognizing that equality for all, our children are being raised in a way that's colorblind, genderblind, blind to sexual preferences, and that's the way it should be. So as mayor of the city of Salem, I do hereby honor and recognize let LGBT Pride Month, and I want to present this to Hope as official proclamation from the city of Salem. Let's have a great afternoon. The fun's just starting. Next on board, we have a uh, young man who uh, needs no introduction. Uh, he is a long-term advocate for LGBT persons. I heard him on Channel 5 uh, Thursday morning giving a shout-out to North Shore Pride. He said he was going to practice his wave, and I, th I think he did a really good job. He, uh, he uh, did not hesitate uh, when I asked him would he come and represent North Shore Pride for the first ever North Shore Pride Parade and Festival. Our friend, Mr. Randy Price. Hi, everybody. Wow, it's great to be here. I always, I, I, every time I'm in Salem, I was just telling the mayor that one of the first stories I covered when I moved to New England 30 years ago was a, a big fire and they let us go into the city hall and it was such a, a wonderful experience being in this great historic city. And of course over the years I've been back here for some of the more fun things that, that happened in Salem. 
And it was absolutely fantastic being here today with you. I had uh, a great reaction from people along the way. Well, some people do slip up, you know. They go, hey, Randy Price, Channel 7. And I'm like, ah, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have moved on from time to time. So people do kid me about it. In a 30-year career, I've been at all of the major stations. And I always say, well, look at it this way. At least I'm on Channel 5. It took me all those years to work my way to the top. Yeah. So anyway... Whatever station you call out and you recognize me, I thank you. And it's been uh, wonderful being here today. As well as I have moved around with um, different TV stations, I have with Pride events as well over the years. Uh, many years ago, as the Grand Marshal in uh, Boston, and then I've been down in, in Provincetown uh, as the Grand Marshal in Worcester and, and other places. And so I'd like to say to you, it's taken me all these years to get my way to the top. And so I'm getting closer to home since I live in Maine. It's great to be here on the North Shore with all my North Shore friends and here in the historic city of Salem. Let me just say this one thing uh, about people being out. I, I occasionally I get people who question that and whether it's important and uh, by coincidence I'm in the middle of, my partner and I are in the middle of moving so you know how that is, purging all the stuff that you want to get rid of and I was going through my boxes of memory lane as I call them and there were these articles about me coming out, it's been 20 something years ago and being the so called first uh, openly gay broadcaster in the country and uh, I, I think about that, in the, well thank you for that but I, I, I'm thinking about it in the sense of all of the ground that's been covered in the years since. And I work with so many openly gay people now in the business, which is wonderful. And we're going to be hearing from Steve Buckley, who is a, a sports writer who is openly gay, and it's wonderful to see the changes in media all these years. It just makes me wonder what, what you know, what's with the others who think it's some kind of deal that they shouldn't come out, they don't want to be labeled. I look at it the other way. You, you allow yourself to be labeled by others and, and pigeonholed in terms of who you are. You never have the freedom you deserve as a person. So it's, it's great to be here with all of you and ce celebrating being out. I'm wearing my Nagley band. I have a lot of friends in Nagley here. So it's great to be here with you and with them. And thank you so much. Happy Pride, North Shore. That. He said to me, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to be celebrating almost having my cast off, and uh, so I can't think of a better way to celebrate than to come to North Shore Prize. So thank you, Randy Price. Um, you cannot put on a uh, function like this without a lot of sponsors, and we, we just have to mention them. They've been amazing. Um, we want to thank MetLife, North Shore Music Theater, Lucas Noble Financial, Spirit Magazine, North Shore Lesbians. I tell you, they were our first sponsors, and we thank you very much, North Shore Lesbians. And uh, finally, you may have seen some people hanging out. They had Boston Pride shirts on. We are part of Interpride. It's a national organization of all the prides. And Boston Pride came today and gave up their day to help us. Thank you, Boston Pride. And finally, uh, we cannot thank enough, and I want to introduce to you uh, an institution, a person that has uh, stood beside us when we first approached them and uh, said, absolutely, we will stand with you. Uh, I want to introduce to you and thank Eastern Bank, Joe Riley, Executive Vice President of Eastern Bank. Nobody came here to listen to me, and I'm well aware of that, but I just want, I just want you to know um, how proud I am today uh, to be able to be a part of something that my company, Eastern Bank, is as proud as could possibly be to be a part of. The, this day has been such an incredible inspiration, uh, I think, for all of us. And it, it gives you pause to reflect, and I know that as I walked in the parade today, I thought about the tremendous progress that we've all made. We all know that there's a long way to go in ensuring that the choices that people make about who they love and, and how they identify themselves, there's still a long way to go in that regard, but we have come so far. I thought of today as I walked, my college roommate, Mark, 
and how Mark and I lived together in a room for three and a half years and he never told me that he was gay. I never knew. And then my best friend, Ethan, who had to tell my girlfriend at the time uh, that he was a gay man and he didn't know how I would take it. And thank God uh, he told me and our relationship was ever stronger. And Ethan was ever stronger. And so we have a long way to go. A lot more work to be done. But boy, have we come an awful long way. And so I'll just close my remarks by again thanking my employer, Eastern Bank, for giving me this opportunity to be able to represent. And I also want to give a special shout out to my daughters, Marisa and Trina, who accompanied me here today. It meant an awful lot to me. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day and enjoy yourself. Thank you so much, and um, not last but certainly not least, an individual who uh, who uh, I heard at Manchester High School some time ago, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, and I heard his story, and I called him up and said, "Would you be willing to come to North Shore Pride and and share with the group and tell your story?" And uh, he's been emailing me and calling me ever since, telling me how excited he is to be here. Uh, a well-known sports writer for the Boston Herald, please say hello to Mr. Stephen Buckley. First of all, let me just tell you how enormously honored I am to be here this afternoon. And by way of explanation, I'd like to point out that for the first 75 or 80 years I was a sports writer, <laughs> whenever I got invited to an event it was to talk about the Red Sox, the Patriots, the Celtics, the Bruins and so forth. For the last year and a half, every time I get invited to an event, it's also to talk about the Red Sox, Patriots, Bruins and Celtics, but also to talk about being openly gay. And to connect that story with where I'm standing today, and Hope had mentioned my appearance at Manchester Essex Regional High School which was one of my first appearances after I came out last year. And I went to Manchester Essex High School. We did two events. One of them was in the morning. One of them was in the evening. It was during the morning event when I spoke to the class, the entire class of the high school, all four classes. I spoke for about 45 minutes. And what I'm about to tell you should answer the question, why do these people have to come out? Why do they have to make a big deal out of it? Why can't they just keep it to themselves? It's because of this. After speaking for about 45 minutes at Manchester Essex Regional High School, about 30 of the kids came up to the lip of the stage, and all you know, we began talking about the Red Sox and all that cool stuff. And there was one student standing off to the side. And I could see out of the corner of my eye that he was standing there, and I began to sense that there was some mission here. And finally, the two girls standing behind him with their four fingers like this nudged him toward me. And in front of all these kids standing there, he came out. And he said, I'm gay, I want to get this out in the open, I want everyone to know it. And hearing from him later on, hearing from other parents, and now let's give that kid a round of applause, that was pretty cool. And, and to connect that with me being here today and being a closeted member of the media for several years, people ask me, well, you know, why did you finally come out? And I guess one of the reasons I came out was so that I could sit in the same stage with Randy Price. So how about a big round of applause for Randy Price? I did an event a couple of days ago at Massport with David Brown, who's a meteorologist in Boston Television. And for a good number of years, David Brown and Randy Price and people like that were role models to me because I took the attitude that if they can do it, I can do it. And if I can do it, others can do it and the snowball rolls down the hill and it gets bigger and bigger and I think that makes the world a happier place. Thank you so much for inviting me, I appreciate it. How are y'all feeling right now? Woo! Kind of limp and sweaty. Yeah, me too. So, here's what I want you to do. Raise one arm. Yeah, do it. Raise the other and just shake it out. <laughs> Oh, that was weak. Try this. Make this noise. Woo! Now make this noise. La 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 la. Now do it together. Keep that noise going. 
because we are bringing to the stage 